Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in this video, we're, we're going to get halfway at least uh, to simulating our urban energy model that we've been building over the last few, few video tutorials. Uh, and so in order to, to simulate the model, uh, you, you know that earlier in the series we had everybody install the UrbanOpt SDK. Uh, and so I didn't really get the chance to cover too much about what UrbanOpt really is. Uh, if you guys have the time to, to really look into it, I really recommend checking the, the docs that exist for UrbanOpt. Uh, you can just follow this URL at docs.urbanopt.net. But the UrbanOpt SDK and well, Software Development Kit and CLI, they're basically just a, a uh, interface that allows you to coordinate and execute uh, your energy simulations in parallel. And you'll see over the course later in this series, we're gonna use various different uh, connections that the UrbanOpt SDK supports to, uh, to use those energy results in various other, other types of uh, simulation engines. Uh, so again, I'd encourage you guys to take a look at this if you have time, because a lot of the rest of this series, we're just gonna be simulating various things that the UrbanOpt SDK connects to. Uh, an important thing to be aware of is that under the hood for the energy simulation, we are still using Energy Plus and Open Studio. So you can think of UrbanOpt SDK as a kind of umbrella that stands on, you know, it includes both Open Studio and, and Energy Plus as well. Uh, so it's the same exact energy simulation under the hood. Uh, right, UrbanOpt itself isn't really an engine, it's just this, this software development kit, this glue between various other types of simulation engines. Uh, and so you can expect the same exact results whether you run something with UrbanOpt or directly with the Open Studio SDK. Uh, or the Open Studio uh, and Energy Plus uh, uh, platforms. So, all right. So now that you guys have kind of uh, gotten a sense of that, I'm actually going to go over to the to our Energy tab and drop this DF Run uh, Urban Op component on the canvas. So again, this is under the Dragonfly tab, under the Three Energy sub tab. There's a component called DF Run Urban Op. And so you'll see that this is expecting a few different types of inputs in order to be able to execute the simulation with Urban Op. Uh, and some of them should be pretty familiar, things like an EPW file, which is our climate file. That makes sense. We'll have to grab that. Uh, we have things like simulation parameters that allow us to dictate how long of a time period to run the simulation. Let's say if we only want to run it for a month instead of a whole year, or you know, that also allows us to select what outputs we want from the simulation. Uh, but there's another output here, which is actually going to be the focus of this video, uh, because we need, in order to run the, the UrbanOpt uh, run our, our Dragonfly model through UrbanOpt, we need to have a GeoJSON file, basically. So you guys heard me reference GeoJSON earlier in, the, uh, in this tutorial series. GeoJSON, it's an open format for representing uh, essentially just 2D building geometry, usually building footprints, uh, among other various types of geospatial information. Uh, so essentially, in order to be able to uh, run our, our Dragonfly model with UrbanOpt, we first need to export uh, this model over over using uh, over to a GeoJSON format. So you'll see under the serialized tab, the serialized kind of sub tab we have here is the you know go to place for whenever you want to uh, basically transport your your models from one format to another. And you'll see that we have a component that does the Dragonfly model translation to a GeoJSON. So I'm going to drag and drop this component on my canvas right now. And you'll see, actually, so some of these inputs should be pretty straightforward, right? So it's meant to take our Dragonfly model that we already already have coming out of this component here. Uh, and uh, if we look, continue down this component here, a lot of these inputs should look pretty familiar, right? So you have the option to use multipliers, add plenums, solve ceiling adjacencies, specify shade distance. These, if you guys remember, right, this component that we use to export our Dragonfly model over into a Honeybee format, these same exact types of outputs exist on the DF model to GeoJSON component. So essentially what this means is that you have the option when you are exporting your, your Dragonfly model to run it in, in uh, UrbanOpt and Energy Plus, you have the option of whether you want to use multipliers or not. We already seen what the effect of that is in previous videos. Uh, you also have the ability to specify shade distance. Uh, right, if you only want to account for contact shading within a certain radius around each building. 
So actually, first, even before I go and do anything else, I'm going to take the options that I have here, at least the things that I'm customizing here for multipliers and shade distance. I want to make sure that I'm exporting my, my uh, Dragonfly model into a GeoJSON format using these, these same parameters here. So I'm going to take these two, select these two, the Boolean toggle and the shade distance. I'm going to copy them and paste them so that I can then plug them into the, the corresponding inputs on the DF model, the GeoJSON. So, right, so this will ensure that I'm exporting the fully detailed geometry, which is what we what we see in the Rhino scene. Whoops, what we see in the Rhino scene here, right? If I were to turn the preview off on this uh, room to the attributes and turn the preview back on on this visualize by type here. So this will ensure, right, that we're getting all of these individual stories, these repeated stories, exported as real geometry into our, our ultimately into our Energy Plus model. Okay. All right, so we have we have those two options. I mean, again, these are two optional ones. So I know we usually start off with the required ones first. So let's start to knock those out. So we know in order to run this component, we, we definitely need a Dragonfly model. So I'm going to connect up our Dragonfly model to the model input of the, the, this GeoJSON component. Okay, and then you'll notice we need two other things in order to be able to export this. So we need a location. And we need a, uh, well, and we basically need to set the right to true. So the location, so the reason why we need this is that GeoJSON is a format that exists essentially, you know, it, it can exist independently of any sort of urban opt uh, or, or other platform. It's a very, very common open type of, uh, of geospatial uh, data format. Uh, and so the thing is, in order to actually write this, though, into GeoJSON, this needs to be geolocated somewhere on the globe. And that's the reason why we need to plug in a, a location here. Um, I mean, if you guys really want to do diligence, the best way to kind of set up your location, if you know exactly where your site is, uh, you can go over to Google Maps and find the latitude and longitude of, uh, of your specific location. You know what? In fact, maybe I'll, I'll just do that. So because I know where this site is supposed to exist on the globe, I can just go to, let's see, I'm going to search Buffalo, New York. New York. And let's see, I'll pull up Google Maps here, which I can use to get latitude and longitude coordinates. And I know, I think the site is supposed to be somewhere, yeah, somewhere in this area is, is about where the uh, the model that we have is, is going to go. So I think I'm just going to get the latitude and longitude. You can get it right here from, you know, just by clicking on the blank space of the map. Uh, and let's see, if I go and I'll copy this, uh, well, it gives it. It's. It, I'd rather have it as decimal instead of, uh, instead of uh, the exact uh, coordinates here. I guess these are these are in decimal values. So maybe I'll just leave this up to the side here. So I'm going to copy this over into my grasshopper definition, All right? So I know my latitude is supposed to be 40, 42 Right. Uh, again, this will be different for every project, and the longitude is supposed to be minus seventy-eight point eight five one one nine four. All right, and so I can use these to create a location object that will actually geolocate the this model exactly on the globe here. So the way that I can do this, I'm going to go back to full grasshopper here. Uh, is that we can just use a native grasshopper, uh, sorry, not native grasshopper, a, a ladybug tool, ladybug component for constructing the location. It's this little iHeart New York component that's under the ladybug tab. And if I go and I drop this onto the canvas, you'll see that this uh, allows me to plug in my latitude, my longitude. I know my time zone uh, in New York, I think is just minus five from, uh, from the, oops, minus five it should be from the, uh, the Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, and I'm going to give a name for our location. I'll just say that this is, um, whatchamacallit, this is uh, Buffalo New District. <laughs> uh, Buffalo New District. Right, and so this is going to give me a location object that will be able to geolocate uh, this, this, this GeoJSON on the planet when I export it. Again, actually, in honesty, the real geolocation doesn't matter too much. It's not actually used as part of the urban op simulation, right? Because all of the weather and climate data is already contained in the EPW file, and we can pull everything from that. 
Uh, so there's no reason to go through all this except to get a nice clean GeoJSON out at the end that you can also use for purposes other than uh, than just urban op modeling. So all right, in any case, so I'm going to connect up my location here. Uh, you'll notice we can also connect up a point, which is meant to represent like where on the site does this this ge you know this geolocated point uh, correspond to. So let me see. I'm just going to group. Uh, let me see. Group. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that I can move them over there, and I'm going to go back over to the Rhino scene and select a point, the point that I know should correspond to this location. Uh, and I think it's actually meant to be. Uh, if, if I'm looking correctly at the, the, the map here uh, are of, of Buffalo, I think uh, this corner of this street is supposed to correspond with uh, this corner of this building here. So if I go, I can just in Grasshopper here, double click on the canvas, type point to bring up a native Grasshopper point parameter. Uh, and then I will right click on that to set one point. And as I said, that's right around here on the scene. Uh, so that then I can just go and plug that point straight into this uh, this this GeoJSON component. Okay, all right. So I think I'm pretty much almost there, uh, right? I connected the model, I connected the location, the point, all the pro you know the the kind of parameters that I want to do in in terms of the export. Uh, the last thing that I need to do to get this component to run is just connect the toggle to write. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to uh, pull up a boolean toggle. Uh, we'll connect that to write. And it, while it's false, I'm not going to get anything out of this component yet. But if I then go and uh, set this uh, toggle to true and give it a few seconds, it's going to translate my whole Dragonfly model uh, over into a GeoJSON. And this is actually what I wanted to look at here. So you guys will see we have a GeoJSON file that's been written out uh, onto our, our system here, in, into our, my, my local file system. Uh, and you can see by default it's taking on the name that we gave to the model over here, this new Buffalo district. Uh, you can, you know, so you can change that model name to change the name of the GeoJSON that's ultimately written out of this. Um, so essentially, you'll see that we like this should give us exactly what we need in order to then go and run the the, the urban op simulation. Uh, I'm not going to run the the urban op simulation yet in this video. We're going to do that in the next one. Uh, other things that I want you guys to be aware of is that this component, in addition to writing out the GeoJSON, it's also written out a list of honeybee models. So you see that we have a HBJSON for each and every uh, model that we exported here. Each, sorry, each and every building in our Dragonfly model. Uh, right, so we're getting, it's very similar to the way that we got a list of HP models out of this component, right? We're getting a list of, of, uh, of, of HP JSONs out of this component. And in fact, we actually have the, the list of models that are aligned to this. So this is another way, uh, you know, you can tell that under the hood, we're basically exporting everything to Honeybee. So this is another way to really preview your model, uh, right? Instead of... Uh, <laughs> Uh, right, it, having to use a separate DF to Honeybee component, I could have just plugged this one into there uh, to go and preview the model. But I'm going to put that back uh, the way it is right now um, because, yeah, because I think we're pretty much ready to go over to the simulation. But before we do so, I just want you guys to be aware of what the GeoJSON actually looks like here. So, right, so this is a file on our on our machine. Uh, I can use, uh, if I go under Ladybug Extra, there's an LB open directory which I can use to just connect up the GeoJSON file path. And this will show me basically where on my machine that GeoJSON file has been written, right? So this is where it's living right now. Uh, and if you guys ever want to preview or check your GeoJSONs to, to be sure that they make sense, uh, there's a very nifty website to do this. Um, if you guys just uh, search for GeoJSON, I think it's the second Google result, this GeoJSON.io. Uh, so this will allow you to actually preview your GeoJSONs in your web. I, I have a previous map there that I don't want to recover. Uh, but the way that you can you can essentially uh, preview your GeoJSON, make sure that it looks correct, is that you can go over to Open here, uh, File, and then I'm just going to copy the file path to where I know this GeoJSON exists on my machine. So I'll copy that into there, hit Enter. And then I can select my GeoJSON. And once I open my GeoJSON in this GeoJSON.io, you'll see exactly how it's meant to fit on this site uh, right in, in the larger <laughs> Buffalo district area. So again, you don't really need to go through this whole process of geolocating to be able to get an accurate energy simulation. Uh, right? This is just 
uh, you know, to get a clean GeoJSON that you can use for other purposes. Uh, but I want you guys to be aware because if you are, you know, going to send this GeoJSON off to someone else uh, for, for them to use it, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's very useful to be able to geolocate this uh, correctly within a city. Uh, but yeah, if you guys ever need a shortcut, you really don't care about what the GeoJSON looks like. You just care about energy results. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable to plug in the location from an EPW file um, when you do that. In fact, maybe I'll just do this right now to save us a step because we know we're going to need the EPW file when we run uh, our energy simulation, our urban opt energy simulation over here. So let me just delete this LB open directory component. So I'm just going to delete this. Uh, and okay, and let's go in and uh, grab an EPW file that we can use here uh, for for the energy simulation eventually. So uh, in order to, to get an EPW, this should be a review for a lot of you. <laughs> so we, I'm just going to use the LB download weather data component, uh, and this will allow me to to download whoops download an EPW file directly uh, from the uh, the Department of Energy database. Uh, that uh, that can then be you know used either to bring in a location or to to you know and to specify the EPW file here. Uh, so let me see. I will just bring up uh, go over back to my browser here, uh, and I have EPW map. <laughs> you can see already on a shortcut. Uh, if you guys just want to get to this interface to select any, a weather file, you guys know you can just go to ladybug.tools/epw map. Uh, and let me grab the weather file for Buffalo, New York here. Uh, it's like just the airport here, this DOE file, this looks good enough. So I'm going to copy that link to my clipboard. I'm going to go back over to Grasshopper here, and I'm going to uh, double quote and uh, paste that into a panel so that I can then uh, download this, this Buffalo EPW file uh, to my machine. So let's see. So all right, we'll plug this into the weather URL. And you'll see out of this now, we're going to get the EPW file path on our system. So right, so this is what we're ultimately going to use to run the simulation. I just want you guys to be aware it's perfectly acceptable if you do not care about the GeoJSON to just use this LB import location component that I have here, and you can plug that into the to the location of the DFJSON. That's also totally valid as well. You know, it'll be close enough in most cases. So all right, in any case, yes. Yeah, so, so we have an EPW file that's ready to go for our next. Um, our next video here. Let me group that together. Uh, and we have, very importantly, we have our GeoJSON that's ready to go. So in the next video, we're going to actually simulate our, our model in, in UrbanOps uh, and export it over into the into the, the, the simulation engine. Uh, so finally, we're going to be at the exciting point. So thank you guys for sticking out to this video. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one where we, where we finally hit simulate.